Hi, my name is Andrew Kudrovtsev and welcome to another episode of my Fairlight tour. Today I'm going to show you how actually I integrated my Fairlight system into the modern DAW setup, how I'm running the audio back and forth, data back and forth between the production studio and legacy studio. And I will show you also some tricks, maybe you're not familiar about that. So, uh, as you probably have already seen in my introduction video of this system, that's a base configuration. Uh, I have it currently up and running, so that noise that you hear is actually the noise generated by that system. It runs on a full power right now because it's a little warm currently, uh, and I want still to maintain the, uh, the, the cool temperature of that system. So, um, it basically, it consists of a system connected to my Pro Tools setup, and I'm using Pro Tools mainly as a digital mixer. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of a Pro Tools DAW, but I do like the routine and flexibility of that system. So basically all the analog uh, signals out of Fairlight coming inside the Pro Tools, mixed into the group there, processed there with the faxes, and then separately sent over the light pipe to my main door. So the dry signal comes separate, the fax signals come in separate, and then I'm recording everything on my main door. But the idea is that I'm not really tied to the corner, so I can be flexible between my uh, base setup, which I'm a Cubase user, I'm using Cubase for ages, and, uh, and this setup as well. So for that reason, uh, the system is connected through the KVM that you already have seen in the previous video, but basic reason for having a KVM is being able to control that system from this operator location to my main location or um, this can be anywhere in between if I'm using the something which is more portable. For instance, if I take a laptop, uh, if I take the uh, iPad, so I have exactly the same KVM screen, uh, which is here, which is over there, and I have it here. So I, if I need to control it from here, I can technically do that. Or if I just need to see the screen, not running back and forth between these two, I can do that as well. So now let's have a quick look on the way how all this routing set up and some of the pedals that you may see here and wondering what are you doing here. So I will show you that too. As because Fairlight was one of inventor companies who invented a lot into the how modern DAW look like, how the editing look like, how the media implemented. Uh, at the time when they did all of that, there was not something like a normal sustain pedal supported over the normal uh, control message 64, uh, it doesn't support that. So it takes for the input only first 32 uh, CC uh, 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 channels, and uh, basically that's the way it operates. So from the main DAW, I can send to the media input any control changes from the 0 to 31, and that's it. If everything comes on the 32, that then would be uh, well, basically downscaled back to the zero, so that's a loop. For that reason, in order to simulate what technically sustained pedal would do, I'm using this pedal board by Behringer, which I custom programmed to the CC messages that I need, and I'm using these CC messages across all the voice creation that I'm doing here on the Fairlight, so it's always consistent. That's why I'm not reprogramming the Behringer, it's set up, it's a set and forget forever. So, um, the way it currently set, so it, it's a dry signal, it's a basic string signal, and uh, on the left pedal, I set the release time. So now with that, I can pretend that it's a sustain pedal. In the same way, uh, on the right pedal, I, in that case, for this particular voice, I assigned the filter. And uh, another example, uh, for another uh, button here, I assigned the vibrator. Plus it has some preview buttons if I just... If I want to check the sound, I can always do it here without any touching the keyboard. So it's, it's really convenient controller at the end and it's probably the 
the lowest cost for the functionality that you can do. There are two more pedals here that you see in this area and I will explain it in a little bit uh, because it's connected to the Roland SRV2000 reverb unit and it controls the uh, basically effects for infinite space. Now let's have a quick look on the routing that I have here. That I have here. I'm using the number of the uh, software plugins plus number of uh, hardware plugins and I'm going to trigger uh, basically one by one so you can hear the difference um, let's start with reverb. It's a basic reverb, there is nothing fancy here, plus reverb coming from my uh, Dynacore DRP-15. I put the wet way up than I usually do. Then it has the effect coming from the Sony, so let me, let me make it just individual. and then the effect coming from the Roland. The way I'm using the SRV2000 is, is with a pedal board right here, and it basically, it controls the, if I hit the node, and then press a button, it stays in the infinite loop. So now from there, anything that I play, It's mixed together, so simply because it has two pedals connected to the unit and now uh, uh, one controls, then it starts, and another is controlled, then effect stops. And if I want to mute, I just do that. If I combine all of that together, all of these reverbs, uh, quick delays, and try to play all of that, uh, that would be a plus the pedals, so that would be pretty interesting. So this is how you can operate with this system in real time. Uh, the beauty of the Fairlight is that it has a multiple of a MIDI port, and uh, well, one of the port is basically is coming from my door. Another port is coming from the uh, from the foot pedal, so I don't need really to to merge it together. Fairlight does it for me, and I can filter it and enable it, disable it, and I don't need it. There are some challenges, obviously, with recording all of that, but basically I'm trying to play most of this live, so it makes extremely convenient, especially then you can, uh, well, adjust the system for your own use. That is pretty much on this side. Uh, what I didn't show in my last video, that the way how you can operate system by standing next to it, it comes on my special desk that I designed a couple of years ago. And this keyboard stand is basically it leveraging one of the IKEA uh, motorized desks, which adjusted to the size of a Fairlight. So with that, it's extremely well. Usually, <laughs> it's very convenient to to place the system onto the height that you need and play with that as you would prefer. So just wanted to share that with you, and uh, thanks a lot for watching this.